Hey everyone, it's Corey McCarthy and thank you for tuning in. This video is sort of an educational follow-up to my last video about BuzzFeed's low testosterone try guys. Uh, in that video, I discussed how three out of the four of them had below normal testosterone levels and one of them, Eugene, had levels considered uh, low for your average 85 to 100 year old male. Uh, I've linked to that video below in the description for your convenience. Uh, the data from that video got me to thinking about testosterone levels as we age. Will there be a problem? And if so, what will the problem or problems be? And most importantly, uh, what can we do about it or them? If we take a look at the documented average testosterone levels by age group, we'll notice that total testosterone levels remain within normal healthy range, even when we're as old as 85 to 100. Considering that people have an average life expectancy of 76 to 81 years, testosterone shouldn't be an issue for many folks during their lifetimes. That is generally speaking, of course. Remember, when talking about averages, we are not talking uh, about outliers or special cases. The normal healthy testosterone range for men is 270 to 1,070 nanograms per deciliter. And as I've discussed in a previous video, research demonstrates that so long as you fall within that normal range, muscle growth or maintenance is not notably different from the bottom end to the top end of normal. The only thing that is significantly different, however, is fat storage. Men on the higher end of normal range lose fat easier than those on the lower end of normal. This certainly explains why we store fat easier as we age, and as such, I uh, need to be more cognizant of our diets if we wish to get or remain lean. That all being said, Looking back at that chart of average levels by age range, we can see that the free testosterone dramatically decreases as we age, taking its first nosedive, on average, between 35 and 44 years of age. Free testosterone being more important than total, as free testosterone is what is bioavailable for your body to use, for instance, to build muscle. And this drop in free testosterone is likely caused by the documented increase in sex hormone binding globulin, or SHBG levels, as we age. SHBG binds tightly to three sex hormones found in both men and women, estrogen, DHT, and testosterone. As such, SHBG controls the amount of testosterone that your body tissues can use. So, for aging men who have healthy total testosterone levels, uh, finding a way to control SHBG is arguably important for maintaining one's physique and strength into the later years of life. Uh, thus, I want to spend this video focusing on what we can do about SHBG specifically without resorting to drugs. Because having an effective, sustainable game plan is the best route to victory. One natural way to go about controlling SHBG appears to be supplementing with a quality Tongkat Alley product, which has been shown in one human study to significantly reduce SHBG in 25 seniors aged 57 to 72, while in turn significantly increasing both total and free testosterone concentrations, as well as muscular force production. Another human study on 30 men aged 31 to 52 years using a proprietary extract of Tongkat Alley called LJ-100 found that after three weeks of use, SHBG had decreased in the test subjects by 66%. That would be a deep enough decrease to reduce SHBG levels in an average male aged 85 to 100 to a level below that associated with an average male aged 25 to 34. And for those interested, I've linked to a bulk LJ100 powder in the description below. Buying bulk is generally the way to go to save money. Granted, raw powders can taste like shit, so you either want to chase it down with something, uh, hold your nose, or just cap it. Beyond Tongkat Alley, another possibility is supplementing with an extract of stinging nettle, which has also been shown, at least in vitro, to inhibit the binding of SHBG to its receptor. You can also ensure that you eat enough carbohydrates, as one study in vivo demonstrated that insulin is capable of stimulating testosterone production 
and inhibiting SHBG concentrations. Just be careful what kind of carbohydrates you ingest as a single oral glucose feeding of 75 grams has been shown to result in a 25% reduction in testosterone levels in men for up to two hours. In other words, you should stick with fruits, potatoes, grains, rice, oats, and that ilk uh, for your carb intake, uh, not candy. You should also be aware that many prescription drugs can raise SHBG by one manner or another, such as antipsychotics, antidepressants, anticonvulsants, uh, antacids, antihistamines, sedatives, morphine, diabetes medications, and apparently even coffee. But the research into coffee's effect on SHBG comes from a relatively small sample size of only 42 and only showed a gender-specific minor impact on SHBG in women. In men, caffeinated coffee actually increased total testosterone and decreased total and free estrogen. So I wouldn't worry about coffee in the grand scheme of things, especially considering its noted health and performance benefits, uh, many of which I've discussed on this channel before. Um, you should also strive to receive enough magnesium and zinc each day. Research shows that when intake levels are kept adequate for both, SHBG levels are subsequently lowered. Finally, stay away from alcohol. Research demonstrates that plasma SHBG levels will decrease significantly after a short abstinence from alcohol intake in people with healthy livers. Thus, alcohol consumption can significantly increase SHBG uh, among a myriad of other nasty effects on hormones, uh, muscle growth, and performance, uh, all of which I've discussed on this channel before. Uh, those are just some tips to help you manage SHBG and improve your free bioavailable testosterone as you age. Uh, I can't claim that that list is exhaustive, um, but it certainly provides a good uh, guideline by which to follow. Now, keep in mind, if you do have below normal testosterone, uh, seek medical attention. Do not rely solely on natural remedies such as those presented in this video. Uh, the advice that I've provided is for generally healthy aging males who take care of themselves, they get exercise, they get plenty of sleep, they manage stress, and they eat a quality diet. Uh, not for a man who actually suffers from the very real medical condition hypogonadism, also known as low testosterone. This is not to say that the advice herein would hurt somebody suffering from said medical condition, but it should not replace proper medical treatment either. Rather, be supplementary to medical treatment so long as your doctor approves. I also want to note that none of these tricks or supplements will offer steroid-like results, but may optimize free testosterone within the normal range by lowering SHBG. So I still stand by my past statement about testosterone boosters. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I do hope this video helps you all enjoy life and health and to continue reaping benefits from gym excursions as you age. There is no reason why you can't even uh, put younger men to shame well into your later life, especially given the degenerate lifestyle most people live today, uh, complete with one or more of the following, uh, poor dietary choices, regular alcohol consumption, recreational drug use, smoking, uh, lack of exercise, poor quality of sleep, etc. Uh, if you found this video useful, uh, please like and share it to help others find it. And don't forget to check out my new ebook, Beast Mode by Science, which provides workout plans and nutrition advice to help you optimize your hormones and transform your body all supported by over 100 human studies. Not to brag, but I've not encountered another guide as comprehensive as the one that I've put together. I've linked it below for your convenience. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to hit that bell button uh, to keep on top of my regular updates. With that, I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.